Virgin is the best. Is made in Fran Canada. is the best because their family owned. to the wild is totally the best. Are you guys serious? Stella and Chewy's actually they are the best. Four is organic. Ginger is the creme de la creme of all pet foods. Finally, after five long years, I've decided to review Kibble. I've taken some of the top selling and premium brands around the world to do the review. Let's head to the laboratory. Okay, to begin this review, let's go over some of the foods that you picked that you wanted me to review in the Inside Scoop poll that we held. The first brand that you chose comes from Fromm Family Foods, which is a fifth generation family owned and operated company based in Wisconsin. Up next, you chose the Canadian powerhouse Edmonton based and founded in 1985 Champion Pet Foods and their specific brand, Origin. Debuting in 2007 and the number one selling brand on Amazon today, made by Diamond Pet Food Manufacturers, you chose Taste of the Wild. Based in North America and considered the luxury creme de la creme of pet foods, Signature is manufactured by Pets Global Inc. The next brand you chose, brand new on the scene, Stella and Chewy's Kibble. Stella and Chewy's was founded in 2003 and is based in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. The last brand you chose is made in Canada. Named after the goddess Hyrna, believed by the Romans to protect organs, Dave Stobel and Dr. Maria Ringo teamed up to put together Carnivore. Well, hello, Inside Scoopers, and welcome to another edition of the Rodney Review. Before we get started, I always love to go online and research some of the most popular tests that pet parents do today to see how good their kibble really is. And let me tell you, there's a lot of tests out there. Now, we've tried some like the burn test. Unsuccessful. We also tried the sink test, which means the kibble with more meat should sink to the bottom first. This is gonna be the dog food test. This is one way you can tell if you're feeding your dog quality kibble or not. If it sinks, it's mostly meat content in it. So if you wanna know if you got a quality dog food, drop it in some water. I'm gonna try that. So here we go. First one that sinks to the bottom apparently has the most meat in it and the ones that float are just all filler. We'll count it down. Three, two, one, drop. And as you can see, every piece of kibble failed. <laughs> they didn't sink. That didn't work. And well, after failing at all these experiments, we actually saved the best one for last. This is by far the most popular test in the entire world. YouTube and social media people alike love this test. It is called the vinegar digestibility test. Now, the theory is the vinegar simulates the stomach acids of a dog. Once you apply the vinegar to the kibble, the fastest one to dissolve is the best because it's the most digestible. So what happens if we take these top six most premium bags of food that are out there and we run a digestibility test on it? I mean, logically, these things should go pretty fast. Logically. So the time has elapsed. It's been over nine hours. My house smells absolutely terrible at the moment. So I'm going to give these a stir to see which ones have dissolved the most in the simulated acidic stomach juices. After stirring and waiting nine hours, absolutely nothing happened. I sacrificed my house, the whole place stunk, and nothing happened. Long story short, after one week of setup and filming, I can't tell you how long it took to make those time lapses. It failed, and well, kids, that experiment is useless. And well, I don't have to tell you that this is, these, all these type of tests are just completely ridiculous. Poopy doopy. <laughs> 
Look, today I want to be able to share with you digestible tips, tips that will actually help you along the way, whether you feed kibble or not. Maybe your neighbor, you have a friend, if you're a retailer, if you're a health specialist, if you're a trainer, all of these hacks that I want to offer you today, I've been taught by some of the world's best I know can really help. Now look, of course, the most important thing in the world when doing a kibble review is the sourcing of the ingredients, contacting the manufacturer and asking the manufacturer, can I see a certificate of origin for each and every single one of the ingredients? But in order for me to do that, this little product review could have taken almost up to a year by the time the manufacturers would have got back to me. I highly advise following Susan Thixton from The Truth About Pet Food. I love this woman. She is my mentor and she's gone through rigorous work to figure this out. Hmm. I like this. Okay, now that that PSA is over, it's time to finally start this kibble review. The ideas for these hacks come from several publications I used to write for, honesty hacks if you want to call them, literally judging a bag by the glimpse of your eye. Let's pretend you're in an aisle somewhere, you're in a pet store, and you only have five minutes to make that decision. How do you decide? Now, for example, let's say that you have a bag, like this one right here, and you can go by the ingredient panel, the guaranteed analysis on the side, the caloric intake that's on this bag. Using just the details on a bag, how do you make the best educated decision? Now, originally when I wrote these transparency hacks back in the day, they were for like grocery store bands of food. I never in a million years thought they would work on like high-end premium food. Guess what? After we started doing some of these tests, I was shocked to see the results. If you followed me over these last few years, then you know what drives me absolutely crazy. And that is manufacturers who fail the salt divider test. You see, it's a giant loophole in the industry that makes marketers salivate just at the thought of it. And when I approached the FDA, they said to me, hey Rod, it's freedom of speech. You see right there all those delicious blueberries and cranberries on the front of that bag? Heck, they almost take up a quarter of that photo. All you need is a tiny speck inside that bag of any one of those ingredients and you can plaster all over that bag that it's full of them. It should be called the visual mind game. Some manufacturers will show you a lot, but in reality, they'll give you nothing. So are any of these brands guilty of this? Do they fail the salt divider test? Are you a victim of this? Let's find out and let me show you how to figure it out. Stop what you're doing and listen. Let's take a look at the ingredient list of Zignature, for example. Now, according to AFCO, you can't have more than 1% salt in a bag of pet food. And the way that an ingredient list works, it works from greatest to least, meaning everything that comes after salt is less than 1%. Remember the front of that bag? Look how many blueberries and cranberries they show you. And now check out where it is on the ingredient list, way down here. That means in that entire bag, you're lucky to get that many blueberries, that many carrots, and that many cranberries. A dastardly trick that the unsuspecting pet owner would ever figure out unless she knows what the salt divider is. Anybody else trying to do pet parents? Take a look at the front of Fromm's. Look at all those blueberries and cranberries there. Check them out in the picture. Let's take a look at the back of the ingredient panel. Here's your salt. Anything below that means it's less than 1%. And now check it out. Here's your cranberries. And here's your blueberries. Taste of the wild, anyone? Now I'd let these guys off the hook because of their front of their bag, although that art is terrible and it doesn't show any fruits or vegetables. Check out right above salt. It talks about antioxidants and how awesome vegetables and fruits are. Look at where salt is and look way down there. Tomatoes, blueberries, and raspberries. A false marketing claim. Oh, nothing boils my goose. <laughs> More than when manufacturers fail the salt divider test, we are handing out some Fs today, boys and girls. I sounded pretty serious there. 
Okay, let's go to the score sheets and rank these brands. Okay, to start this off, I'm gonna start with Stella and Chewy's, take a look at their ingredient panel here. Salt is way down here on the bottom and there's not very much after that. Although what sketches me out a little bit is that there are some synthetics above that. So I'm gonna give them a score of three. Okay, up next will be Origin. Now, although they don't list salt on their ingredient panel, they do show you where the herring oil is and they show you, look, 1%, which means everything under that is less than a percent, but they're being honest. Up in the top, it shows you that there's 15% fruit and vegetables, and so they're not really trying to hide anything, so I'm gonna give them a score of four. Okay, check it out, Carna 4 is next. Now, there is where their sea salt is, and I love this. There's exactly one ingredient after it, and look, they write nothing else. Well done, Carna 4. You're gonna get a score of six for being so transparent. Okay, now I never thought I would have to do this for this review, but I'm breaking out the Red Star. You see, the Red Star has special powers. It actually moves you backwards. Rather than getting points, you lose points. In this industry today, we need to be moving forward, not backwards. And in my opinion, stuffing ingredients after salt is moving backwards. Okay, so check it out. Here's our DIY scoreboard. And after two rounds, here is your unofficial scores. Okay, on to the next category, which is packaging. Now, this is something that is really important and not a lot of pet parents give this a lot of time. You see, packaging over the years have changed massively. In fact, if you look at the old style of packaging, and sadly, there are some companies today that still use this, as you can see, this paper bag, look, it tears so easily. This used to be old technology, which is still being used today. I know it's affordable for some companies and they don't wanna spend the money into bringing in new types of packaging. Hey, do you remember this bag where it came from? Of these six brands, which bag is actually the most durable, which is the toughest? So we came up with this idea. Now it's not a scientific genius experiment by any means. There really is no constant here and there's a lot of variables. But what we said to ourselves was, what if we added as much friction as possible to the bags, which bag would tear first or which bag would hold up the longest? Here's the experiment. Okay, so to test how durable these bags are, we came up with a really good idea. Let's drag the bags and see which one pops first. We brought in Keith. This is the top driver that we have in Nova Scotia to be able to do this test. We needed the best drone pilot that we got in the province. Everyone remembers Justin. Hey, cue that flashback. Do we know if this is gonna work? No clue. Here, look out! And then up and coming rising star content creator, we've got Meg. Basically, we cement glued the Betty Crocker chip bag closer, whatever the heck these things are called. Uh, cement glued it to the top of all of these bags as you see here. So this is cement glued and then we have a 20 foot rope that is cement glued. Pretty good hatch job. What's your plan here? My plan is I'm gonna try and give a good pound on the pedal when we get going, just to give it a little jank to see if it just rips the bag maybe, and then we'll probably go over 20 or 30. And I'm there. La mer. La mer. On va danser le long des golfes. On va danser le long des golfes. On va Let's assess the damage. So we got a, two giant gaping holes in the origin. Carnivore's got a little bit of damage, nothing major. This has got a blow into it right there on the side. You can see a hole there. Oh, this guy's really ripped up. He's taking some damage. Taste of the wild. Yeah, he's, he's blown on the sides. And Fromms took the most damage. 
And while this ridiculous experiment will most likely not be replicated by you, it's cool to see which bag could take the most friction. So we're going to award Stella and Chewie's one bonus point for not falling apart completely and two bonus points to Carnivore for hanging in tough. Not mad. Okay, now for the final category, the synthetic vitamin mineral premix. I saved this one for last. This one is near and dear to my heart and a lot of people's hearts. But before we get into this, I want to read to you an article about actually what's going on right now. If you've been following the medias of the last few weeks, this is all over social media. Let me, let me read you the article. All right, so this article comes from CBS News, but there's a million articles out there. And it says, pet food maker faces mounting legal woes over dog deaths. So if you haven't heard, Hill's Pet Nutrition dragged its feet in issuing a recall for its canned food with potential toxic levels of vitamin D, leading to the deaths and illnesses of numerous dogs, according to one multiple lawsuit uh, that's filed against the company. Now, it's all over the place on how many dogs may have passed away. They believe now it could quite possibly be into the thousands. Nobody knows as of yet. They know tens of thousands of these pet owners have bought these cans of food. According to the article, it says it cited the company's US recall of 675,000 cases. That is 13.5 million cans of food that need to be recalled immediately. If we scroll down on the bottom, it says Hills, which is owned by Olga Palmolive, said it had identified and isolated the supplier error that involved a specific vitamin mix. Now, here's why I saved this for last. The synthetic vitamin premix, if you have no idea, it's what literally is the godsend for processed kibbles and canned food and anything that has to go through a rigorous heating process. And by godsend, what I mean is it rebalances the food after it has to go through a lot of stuff. First of all, the meats come from the rendering association, so it goes through a rendering process, so there's a lot of things that are lost there. And then secondly, it has to get to the pet food manufacturer who then has to run it through an extruder, and then there's dryers that are involved, and there's packaging, and there's this whole giant process where a lot of vitamins and minerals are lost. So the manufacturer is forced to put synthetic vitamins and minerals to rebalance those foods. Aside from being a godsend, this is also a ticking time bomb. Because if there's a manufacturer slip up during the production of these synthetic vitamins and minerals that most likely come from China, meaning if somebody calculates incorrectly, if machine dumps too much of a certain synthetic into the mixer and it piles up into one section of it, or a slip of a hand if it's being done by hand, whatever the process may be, you have a ticking time bomb on your hands because you can cause death if this is done incorrectly. So what can happen here is mechanical failure, or let's say the mathematician swings a decimal point incorrectly. There's many factors as to how synthetics can be deadly if done incorrectly. And this is what personally freaks me out. Years ago, my pets were affected by tainted foods, and I've talked about this a zillion times through the media, my dog and my cat. It has scarred me emotionally and is the biggest reason why you see me today as a huge proponent to the feeding of fresh whole life food. I had to take on a second job to be able to afford feeding my guys uh, raw fresh food. The comfort in feeding my animals fresh food is the fact that if I overfeed them, they may become obese, they may get diarrhea, for example, whatever it may be, but I wasn't going to end their lives immediately. Like if feeding something with synthetics in it, you don't know, you can't tell, it's invisible to you. You could wake up the next morning or you could wake up the following week, you could lose your animal right then and there. And I wasn't going to take that chance. The reason why I'm highlighting and leaving this as the last tip is because I believe is the most important when you're selecting the food. You want to be able to find a manufacturer who realizes the problems that are happening with these synthetic vitamin premixes and how each and every single year there seems to be a recall and there's animals losing their lives unnecessarily because of these mathematical errors. So let's take a look at these six brands that we're currently reviewing and see which ones use the most synthetics and which ones have gone above and beyond to avoid as many synthetics as possible. Okay, so here you are standing in an aisle holding a bag of Zignature, let's say, and you flip around the back. What is it you're looking for? Well, you're going to look into the ingredient list. It kind of pops out right away. Those words that you couldn't pronounce if your life depended on it. And primarily, they all come after salt. What you're seeing there is your synthetic vitamin and mineral premix. And look at the size of the list in the highlighted area. 
As you can see, it takes up 75% of this ingredient panel, and the main source of nutrition looks like it's coming from these synthetics. And clearly, the manufacturer hasn't taken any steps to reduce their synthetics and to prevent any future recalls or any catastrophic events. And because of this, I'm going to score them one star. There's no innovation here. Okay, up next is Origin from Champion Pet Foods, and check out this ingredient panel. Just one synthetic, zinc. That's it. As you can see, this company has gone over and above to be innovative and to make sure that their main source of nutrition is coming from food and not a premix. Well done. Five stars. Next up is From, and take a look at this ingredient panel, same as Signature. No innovation here from the company. The main source of nutrition is coming from their synthetic premix, one star. Also a quick side note, those big long words on the bottom are probiotics, so don't confuse those with the synthetics. I've also done a giant review on it here in the Inside Scoop if you want to familiarize yourself with what probiotics look like. Next up is Stella and Chewies and their raw coated kibble. Now although they've been crushing it in the rankings and scoreboard, here is where they're going to fall backwards. No innovation. One star. Okay, next is Karna 4 and pay attention to this ingredient panel. Not a single synthetic vitamin or mineral in this product. Demonstrating to the entire industry that making a kibble without synthetics is truly possible. Well done, six stars. And last but not least is Taste of the Wild. And let's check out their ingredient panel, which by the way was the top selling food on Amazon and check it out. No innovation here. The ingredient list is full of synthetics and the main source of nutrition is coming from synthetics. One star. Thank you so much for watching this review. I really hope we offered you some tools to put in your toolbox to make Love better it. decisions as a pet parent. Now, of course, the entire review is in the inside scoop. It is a Facebook membership area where Love we have it. a whole bunch of information and my proceeds go back to supporting my nonprofit, which is called Pause for Change. And here is the incredible volunteer team. The legendary Susan Thixon to my left, Dr. Karen Becker, Chelsea Kent. These incredible people are helping us because of your support to get the things that we want to do with nonprofit hospitals across the US. Okay. Yeah, we're really excited to begin moving towards setting up hospitals for pets in need that can't afford medical care. And providing valuable research. And testing, like what we just finished. Because of your support, we were able to put together a very extensive test on some of the popular pet foods that are being sold around the world. These things can cost tens of thousands of dollars, so thank you so much for helping. And look, if you don't have the money, do not go in there and spend the $10. Okay. We have a one-week free trial where you can go in, you can finish the rest of the review, get the rest of the tips. But to those who supported, thank you again.